one day after terrible violence shattered the family of a well-known Democrat in Virginia, one of President Obama's former top advisors sent what critics are calling an inappropriately political tweet about the attempted murder of Cree Deeds and the suicide of his son. Today, David Axelrod tweeted out, quote, Deeds family tragedy in Virginia is one more reflection of compelling need to strengthen mental health services instead of cutting them. Monica Crowley is a Fox News contributor and host of The Monica Crowley Show. Bernard Whitman is a Democratic pollster and author of 52 Reasons to Vote for Obama. Does anybody still buy that? It's kind of over. That's kind of book with a very limited shop shelf still, life. It's still a top seller. Okay. Here's my question. Is this, in your view, political? Because he doesn't specifically call out any party, but his critics are saying it obviously is. Well, I interpret it so, and I thought it was pretty shameful for David Axelrod, who has been and remains a political confidant to the President of the United States, to use what's clearly a personal tragedy for the Deeds family to try to score a political point. Not only that, Megan, but he was actually wrong about this. The son who ended up stabbing his father and now is dead um, was turned away from an institution the day before from That's hospital. why he tweeted that, because That's this, this guy was it. reportedly, he went to a mental health institution and allegedly, originally, what we were told, couldn't get a bed at right. a psychiatric hospital. Right, but that hospital. actually wasn't true, and right. there were two hospitals in the region that, Three, could have, yes, that could have taken him. So he was wrong on the facts. And I also think to try to leverage a real tragedy like this when the family is still grieving and the investigation is ongoing, to use that as an opportunity to try to score a political point was really pretty... Uh, pretty I, am, ahead, I am honestly aghast that you're suggesting this is some type of opportunity to score political points. This is an opportunity, actually, to cast a very clear light on a huge problem, one in four Americans has suffered from mental illness in any given year. I think all of us know people who have. And I think what David was trying to say is, look, states in the past few years have cut almost $2 billion out of mental health services. And fortunately, uh, what was not noticed in all of the disastrous rollout with Obamacare in the last few weeks, Kathleen Sebulis announced last week or 10 days ago that two things are going to happen. One, we're finally going to start enforcing a law that George Bush signed to give parity to mental health issues and drug abuse on the same level as physical illness. And with the Affordable Care Act, we're going to get much better treatment and care for these 60 million people. Co-payments yeah, are treated the same. About, he is talking, talking about the shoredage of beds, Bernard. That's the, but that's more the lead that was in the story. Mental health but, is exactly what but let we me need. But, but the, the, the shortage the of beds in Virginia was thanks to budget cutbacks right. that were approved by both Democratic right. and Republican yes. governors. Yes, so this right. is not and, a part of the Bernard, you're, you're making my point. I mean, you just turned it into a political issue. But look, when you look back at the 2008 law that you just cited that President Bush signed into law, that was about parity for mental uh, illnesses, forcing insurance companies to treat them on par with physical illnesses. You had opposition and support to that on both sides of the aisle. President Bush signed it into law. And then remember after the Newtown shooting, uh, Megan, last year, you had Republicans leading the charge for increasing spending on mental illness in lieu of gun control, but they were the ones in the vanguard arguing for more spending on, on mental illness. The other illness. thing is, Bernard, you know, he's coming out and talking about we should be, you know, that we shouldn't be cutting services and so on. It does sound like he may not have known that there actually were beds available and that the initial reporting on this was confused. I don't think he's talking specifically about the Cray Deeds. He's well, how do you know that? He's talking about the How do you know that? Because, because let's face it, this administration, advised by issue. him, has a history of shooting no. first and asking questions later. May I remind you of the alleged Cambridge police? They acted stupidly, according to the president, he which he then had to about dial back. The larger issue of the need to put mental health care on the same level as we care for physical illnesses. And we all know, frankly, that hundreds of billions of dollars is wasted every year in the economy. Millions of lives are ravaged by mental health, and if we can get it on the same par as physical health issues, then I think that that's going to benefit society, it's going to benefit the economy, and benefit the country. But you have that under the 2008 law. Well, listen, now they're Bush doing it. I, I want the viewers to know that now they're going to do an investigation in Virginia about why they were told that there was no bed available when, in fact, there were three. And uh, this will raise the question about whether, you know, what we need to do with our mental health system, because clearly something failed here. Something Something Terrible went tragedy. wrong, obviously. My heart goes out. All right, Monica, thank you both so much. You bet. Thank you.